Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana's channel. My name is Shanks and today for the first time ever in 2022 we are going to besiege the Helm's Deep in the Age of the Ring mod for BFME 2, the Rise of the Witch King. It's a custom map so it's not like a like a campaign or a mission. It's going to be much more unique and you will be able to bring in your own ideas. So furnaces at the beginning of the game and I also hope that you had a fantastic start into the new year 2022 and for the new year I wish you of course the best. Hopefully, you will be able to hit like a truck as much as you need. You will be able to show your quality. And also, I trust you on that one. You will be shining bright like a diamond. That one's finished. So, I believe that's going to be kind of a tough one. Uh, I've not played this yeah, one before. And once again, this is not a mission. This is not a campaign. It's like a custom map. But I like that. Normally, in those kind of missions, you will be... Uh, you know kind of forced to follow a script and you are kind of limited in terms of possibilities however in this version in the age of the ring mod you will be able to do whatever you want you could also play gondor or any other faction really but to make it just like in the film the lord of the rings in the two towers i wanted to play isengard and besiege rohan Uh, I gotta be honest, I have not enough experience in the Age of the Ring mod, so I need to read quite a lot, you know, just to be able to understand. And if you want to, you can also play this one with your teammate, too, against the AI, and besiege two of you at the same time. Playing it solo, I believe, is going to be a bit more challenging, because you have, like, obviously, a one less player, but hopefully, we will be able to make it work. So at the beginning of the game, I like to spam resource buildings. This way, we can make sure that we have a great amount of resource income. And we can eventually uh, recruit all the heroes first. I mean, the Helm's Deep looks awesome, dude. And also one of the best scenes in the films, by the way. When, you know, in the two towers, when uh, Rohan was defending against Isengard. But my lord, there is no such force. Oh my goodness, man, this scene was awesome. I'm kind of sad that Saruman himself An didn't actually go and kind of guide the army. And I believe that was like the weakness of the evil factions, you know, of the evil side in the films, that they have not a leader. I mean, obviously, Witch King or Gothmog was leading the, uh, the Mordor army, but Isengard had zero leaders, you know, in, especially in the Helm's Deep scene. We were done. What is this green thing on the on the ground at the furnace? I'm actually very curious about that one. Uh, we have right now 600 command points available. And by the way, if you don't know, uh, every resource building in the Rise of the Witch King, which is you know the base game of this mod Age of the Ring, will also give you um, combat you know command points. When they are level one, they will give you 50. Level two, they will give you 75. And level three, they will give you 100. Oh my goodness, look at this amazing graphics, man. It's like watching the films, you know? The Eowyn looks pretty realistic to me. We have also Theodred, the son of the king. And we will recruit Wormtong first. Because he's the cheapest. <laughs> Alright, so we have also Elma, the horse lord of Rohan. Uh, like, obviously, the AI is gonna spam a lot of units. Hopefully, they won't attack us, because I'm not prepared for that. And look at this amazing... This guy is smiling, right? Is this guy smiling? The one on the left, this one? But, I mean, I'm impressed. I don't know what to see. I'm impressed by the amazing graphical settings in the Age of the Ring mod. We're done with this one. What else is there to build? You know More furnaces are required. I want to make sure that we have a, a lot of money because we will need to recruit a, a lot of units, obviously, and also all the heroes. We will need a lot of resources for that. Trust me. Escape. I mean, we can take a look into the abilities later on once we unlock them. But for now, I would look at the furnace, dude. Like. Uh, maybe you are like, oh yeah, Shanks, we get it. It looks nice. But for me, it's amazing because, uh, you know, considering the fact that this game is like 20 years old, it looks pretty amazing. We're done with this one. Make yourself useful. Okay, Siege Wargs and Uruk Pits, because now we can also start recruiting some units, eventually leveling up the Siege Wargs in the Uruk Pit to get the chance to recruit... Uh, stronger siege weapons slash the explosive mine 
and also stronger Uruks. Remember, this is no rubble of mindless orcs. These are Urukai. These not. I mean, these are archers. <laughs> but we will get the chance to recruit the Urukai. Gimli, son of Klein. Dude, <laughs> the graphical settings. Like this game looks so dope. Look at the design of the of the structures too. So explosive mine. We need to get it to level three to be able to recruit these. Let's build a tower. I don't know if we need that, but you know, better safe than sorry. And the guy is spamming Alvin Wood and also kind of mist around the area all the time. So let's get Uruk Pit to level 2 first, because once again, that's going to give us the chance to recruit some stronger and more powerful units. If also the Warchant from the Spellbook to make them a bit stronger. And we have freezing we rain all the time. Okay. So fortress for 5,000. We might also build a second fortress later on. And uh, we have right now 850. We will get 900 command points now. But once again, once the furnaces are hitting level 2 or level 3, we will be able to reach easily the command point limit of 1,000. And Siege Works level 3 is incoming for the explosive mines. Just like to break the wall of the Helm's Deep, the deeping wall. Let's buy fire to make it stronger. Oh my goodness, man. This guy has a huge army on top of the wall, my dude. Like, it's going to be hard for us to break through the defense. That's Theodred, by the way, but um, obviously, I mean, that's a scout. Let's fight him one on one. Wong Tong against the scout. Outrider. Now they will see my power. It's an attack! I mean, Wong Tong is a hero, my dude. But look at this, you know? Look at this. Auto attack animation, too. And Wong Tong didn't get any experience for killing the Outrider. All right, all right. Now we will get, um, you know, obviously the Viking on the field because that guy is the Viking, by the way. Wolfgar has arrived. I believe there's like a Dunlanding hero, right? And we will also get the chance to recruit some Dunlanding units. Vitamin of Dunland, obviously. Uh, nearby Dun Landings and White Man gain 50% damage stacks with buffs and spells. It's a leadership one. Okay. And now we can also um, get the Uruk Pit to level 3 for the Urukai Manslayers. We can only have 3 of these on the field at the same time. We have also Urukai Shield Bearers. And, uh, you know, before we actually make anything happen, I would like to recruit some shield, you know, shield Bearers because we can send them forward and this way they can absorb a lot of damage. Look at that. King Theodin. You see the animation on the ground? That's crazy. Okay. So um, we need to break the wall first, guys. And then we will recruit some units. So these shield bearers, they are able to absorb lots of damage, I'm assuming. That's how they are looking like. They look pretty beefy to me. And... The explosive mine hopefully will be able to blow up the wall entirely so we can just get inside the jeans without any problems. Our shields are broad. broad shields formation. Nearby friendly units gain also additional armor so we can combine that obviously with the whole ground stance to make them extremely tanky. And we will also need these sappers because they are able to blow up the explosive mines I'm assuming, right? So the plan is simple. We will be sending those shield bearers first. And once they are able to tank all the damage, we can plant the explosive mines and eventually make it boom, boom. Boom, chakalaka. Oh, okay. They are, they are attacking us, actually. That's, let's ignore that and let's deploy the mine just like in the films, right on the spot. You know what is kind of what is kind of funny? When you're building this kind of stuff like Urukpit, for example, you have like surrounding units around Urukpit which are protecting your Urukpit from uh, from the enemy units. Just very unique to this mod. I've never seen this before anywhere else. Our shields are and he's summoning something. Deploy, please. Oh, he has also Rohirrim now coming. I believe it's gonna be kind of tough for us to reach out now to the explosive mines. We can try anyway. But he has lots of units around this area. However, once you deploy the explosive mines, they are not able to kill them, I think. 
All right, we need to, I believe, send in the Manslayers first because they are also quite tanky. They cost two, uh, tw uh, no, not 20,000, 2,000 each, which is pretty expensive for a normal regular unit. But I'm assuming they're like the mini heroes from the Rise of the Witch King. For example, the Black Riders from the Mordor faction. You have like every single faction beside Engma has some special units. You are only able to recruit a limited amount of these units. But once you have them, they act like a hero. They are also able to level up to level 10, I'm assuming. Okay, Wormtong is level 2, and also Wolfgar the Viking is level 2. Now we have enough money for Saruman the White. And we will need some more um, Berserkers to blow up the mine. And these units are, you know, temporarily on the field. They will be gone very soon. Dark Wings, Dark Wards. Summons two cave pads. Okay. And Isengard, unlike in the Battle for Middle of One, has plenty of new heroes added into this mod, Age of the Ring. Uh, obviously, we have Wolfgar, we have Wormtong, we have Sharko, we have Lourdes. We have also Ugluk here, by the way. So in total, Isengard here has six heroes. Unlike in BFME 1, in which Isengard has only two available heroes. Okay, so I think that's not the right unit. So we need to recruit the sappers, you know? Okay, so um, my goal is to blow up the uh, deeping wall as soon as possible. That's the goal. Don't make any sudden moves. This is not horrible to go off. It's them. They're attacking. They will learn who I am. Okay, Lourdes next. So we are getting closer. And you can see, you know, our money income is going to be greater and greater and greater. Okay, so we have three power points collected. Uh, and also our heroes are leveling up like crazy. We have, you know, Wormtongue level 4 already. Wolfgar is level 4. Saruman is gonna also level up eventually very, very soon. But now, ladies and gentlemen, it's the time to blow up the explosive mines. So let's send the Manslayers first. They will be hopefully able to absorb lots of damage from the archers. Oh my goodness, the scene, you know, when the Sephir was actually running it down to the explosive mine and Legoras was trying to stop him, but he couldn't. And booyah, ladies and gentlemen, there we go. I mean, yeah, we actually kind of broke the wall, but we have no units to invade. We have no units to actually go inside the jeans and finish them off. You know, step by step. Beautiful Zaplas is incoming. We have not killed anything, though. I mean, uh, by the way, in Rise of the Witch King, if you kill those summoned units, you know, from the spellbook or from any hero ability, you don't get any experience, nor you get any power points. Which is something I totally dislike myself. Like, you should be able to at least get experience points for the heroes. Level 5, level almost 5, and we have level 1 Lourdes and Saruman. Okay, so we are only missing Sharku and Ugluk. Then we are set. We are able to win this fight, no problem. And now we can also eventually uh, make a big army. Ugluk has arrived, that's good. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. Nice. Oh my goodness, man. Ugluk, the legendary warrior. What happened to him? He got killed by the Rohirrim from Elma and his horses in the films. I am Wolfgar, son of Brynjar. They're attacking us. We cannot win this. And for 2022, I'm actually looking to read all the books. I've not read them until now, but I'm really interested in reading every single Lord of the Ring books, uh, also the Hobbit ones. Just, you know, I want to I wanna be able to understand the difference between the films and the books. And a lot of you guys told me that there are huge differences in terms of the, you know, story. And, uh, you know, obviously, I know only the one part of the story. And that's, like, only watching the films. But, to be honest, I was watching the films, like, 50 times each of them. Besides Hobbit ones. The, the original trilogy, I've been watching a lot. Uh, but the books, they are missing. Cloud Brick has been used, but it's okay. We have no units to be stunned at this point, to be honest, so it's not a big problem. Saruman is almost level 2. And uh, level 5, Wormtong. Level 3, Ugluk. Ugluk actually levels up like crazy. That's pretty nice. 
And we are able to win this fight. It's no problemo. So we need eventually... Um, <clears throat> I mean, I want to actually recruit three of these. Uh, the Manslayers. Because I believe they are the best units you can recruit from the Uruk pit. And we also need eventually the Armory, right? Armory or... Hmm. Yeah, Armory is kind of different here you can see you, you know i believe the armory is going to be able to level up over time like the resource buildings you can't fight upgrades to level two or level three time to move one more furnace to make sure that we have a lot of resource income you know more resources never can hurt you do what i say finished Okay, so they cost also 120 command points. So they are actually very expensive. They cost 2,120 command points. It means three of them are going to cost us quick math 360 command points in total. That's more than a quarter of our total command point limit. So hopefully they will pay off a lot. Why we cannot recruit the other one? We can, we have, I have only two. Now nah, there is one more. Okay, this guy is not going to respawn over time because uh, the weakness of the evil factions in the Battle for Middle-earth games is the lack of sustain. Let's get banner first. We can also win this fight, no problemo. We are exclusively fighting with the heroes for now. And sooner or later, we will be able to finally get inside the Helm's Deep and defeat them all. Slay all the heroes too, like Gimli, Legolas, Aragorn, Theory, and Elma. They have no chance against the forces of Isengard. We've expanded the fortress. I also want to actually get all the upgrades from this one. Um, Iron Plating. Oh, Lord! What are you doing, Lord? Oh, my good. Lord has fallen. Dude, that's the downside of picking the aggressive stance. You know what I'm saying? Because when you pick, uh, when you pick aggressive stance, they will automatically engage on the enemy units every single time they see them. So that kind of causes your heroes to do whatever they want to do. With that being said, I'm assuming, or not assuming, it's actually the fact that you have to work with the battle stances and make a, make a right call, you know? So we have almost 9 power points collected. We have also obviously the chance to pick the Vision of Palantir if you want to, or the Creepine from the Sphere Book to debuff the enemy units, but let's try to reach to the goal of 25 as soon as possible. So, uh, we are kind of broke all the time. We have not enough money. And we also need to revive Lourdes, who is extremely expensive. You do what you're told. We are yours to take We've expanded the fortress. Um, you know, I'm kind of tempted to build multiple Uruk pits, even though I, I don't think we, we can have the uh, money right now to do that. Nice. Level 3, we have Fireball now unlocked from Saruman. Uh, what is that? Devastation? We don't need that. We might... We don't need money at this point. Tainted Land, I believe, is going to be the best call. Um, you know, just to be able to reach to the 25 as soon as possible. Build me an army. Okay. I want to get this one unlocked. For that reason, we need to pick up the, taint, uh, the um, Tainted Land, you know? Okay, so we have also now this last upgrade on the Fortress. And Lourdes can also be re revived. That's good. We have three of these Manslayers, and this is going to level up slowly but surely to level two. Now we can also recruit some other units, but as you can see, our money is not looking that good. Let's recruit some Urukai, the fighting Urukai, for the melee units in the front line. They will see but we will also definitely need some crossbow men to, you know, keep the distance and shoot from a safe range. Okay, so what is that actually? Purchase man's blood. Okay. Thick skin for additional armor or iron fist. Nearby Uruk skin, attack damage and movement speed. Okay. Sounds very promising. Banner carrier can be purchased on these units to make them level 2. None shall oppose us. What is that? Allow Saruman. Okay. The fighting Urukai. They will get more damage and more combat experience. And also cost reduction by 20%. 
Theory of Phraseland. Wicked Mark's Man. That's for the crossbow man in Urukai Scouts. Wolves of Isengard. Metal and Wheels. And Black Steel. Okay. Okay. So we can actually get them all, right? At this point. I mean, I don't know if we can actually choose more than one. We will see about that. Let's recruit some more crossbow man. Is this level 2 yet? Nope, that's not level 2 yet. We will need that to be level 2 for the for the fire arrows. I'm actually kind of curious if the Rohan army is going to be able to summon like a like a, uh, additional Rohan army, you know, just like in the films, coming from the left side and attacking us. That's why I would like to build some towers just to feel a bit more safe. Yes, this way. I'll take Okay, so enough reading. It's time to go for to war. You know, Lord has returned, so we have all the heroes on the field. Uh, Grima Wormtongue is level eight, level six Wolfgar, level four Saruman, level four Ugluk, level two Sharko, and level three Lords. And uh, once we have some more crossbowmen on the field, we can actually go for an attack. Even though I would like to wait uh, for the fire arrows just to you know maximize the DPS. But it is enough waiting and it's time to fight. Let's see if this army is going to be enough to actually break the defense of the enemy AI. Who is desperately trying to defend the Deeping Wall. Okay, so we have... This time we have a great amount of resources. We can actually build up the second fortress. You know, just to... Even though the fortress has not a crazy amount of impact on this one. War chant. Fireball, boom on your face, son. Okay. But we have no pikemen for the lancers. Boom, son, Saruman, showing his quality too, just like Faramir. Yeah? Speechcraft to level them up. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, now we can level them up from level two to level three. And one of them is even level four. That's pretty nice. Our front line is picking our front line is looking pretty strong. The men's layers they are doing a phenomenal job. They are also extremely tanky. Uh, we are also collecting a lot of power points. We just gotta take care of our heroes. We have right click on this one, hunt for the ring. Nearby infantry and heroes gain 15% movement speed. Let's use it. Boom for more additional movement speed. You can see the animations are shining bright like a diamond. Backstep. And targeted enemy heroes' abilities are being resetted. Let's right click on every single one of these. So the heroes are going to be able to use it automatically whenever it's available, you know? Okay, so please shoot. Do something, crossbow man. Level 5, both of them. Level 5 is the maximum amount of level you can get in the scheme for the normal units. Lords, please stay closer to the crossbow man to give them some leadership. Okay, we have now 13 power points collected. Saruman, with level 7, he's going to unlock the Red Horn's Wrath. It's almost Sharku. I mean, now you can flame me in the in the comment section down below and say, Shanks, what is this micro? I know, I know, I know. But uh, to be honest, I have not enough experience in this mod yet. You know, practice makes perfect. Let's get all the upgrades. We can do whatever you want to do at this point. Let's get them all. Okay, we are broke now. Once again, 15 power points collected. We can go for this or for the freezing rain. Let's pick up the freezing rain because then we will be able to choose one of these two. When we pick the Buildman army, we can only choose the right one, you know? I like to have a bit more options when it comes to choose the power points later on. Freezing Rain is also going to debuff the enemy units, which is going to make them weaker, and we will be hopefully able to kill them this way a bit faster. Saruman is doing a phenomenal job. The Wizards, I like to play with them the most. Boom, Sun on your face, level 7, and not just like that. Let's use it right off the bat. Maybe on this unit on top of the wall. Uh, this is gonna be the Thunderbolt, I believe, right? So it's gonna be sim similar to the one we have already seen many, many times in BFME 2 slash in the Rise of the Witch King. Boom! Nice. Don't, don't! Wormtong has fallen. Saruman, run. Oh my, dude, they actually hurt Saruman a lot. Can he get away? No, he cannot get away. Holy moly, and he's so expensive too, we cannot even revive him. So let's try to deal some more damage to the enemy structures. Seven power points collected. We are actually getting closer and closer for the 25. 
And remember, this is only the deeping wall. We need to eventually destroy everything inside the Helm's Deep. More units are required, Urukai. But first of all, let's recruit. Oh my goodness, 4,400? Are you kidding me? I mean, losing heroes hurts in this mod. Trust me on that one. It's not like you, you need to pay more than the full money when they have some levels on them, you know? The price is going up, 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 up all the time. It's level, not even level 2 yet, but we have now the money for Saruman, right? There we go, nice. Let's kill all these farms, so this way the enemy is gonna get less money. Even though this doesn't matter for the, for the AI, because AI has unlimited amounts of money, they will also get the chance to summon more and more units throughout the entire game. Crow banner. Okay. We can summon additional units to fight for a short period of time. Let's kill them all, see them all. 13 power points collected. We are 12 power points away from the 25. That's dope. But you have seen that, uh, like in the Rise of the Witch King, we have no Dragon Strike or you have no Summon Dragon in this mod, Age of the Ring. They cannot rid me so easily. Uh, Warm Tongue is back on the menu, boys. That's good. He's level 9. Uh, I'm also not watching over my heroes all the time as, I, as much as I should. Because we have so much money, we can lose them and we can still revive them. Let's go for the heavy armor. And then we can go for the forge blades and crossbowman gets the chance to purchase the fire arrow upgrades too. Please shoot. I don't know why they're not shooting. Dude, you have aggressive stance. Move. We are actually able to breach through the entire defense of the deeping wall already. That's dope. Fire arrows next. For higher DPS. And also with the fire arrows, your crossbowmen are going to get the chance to... Oh, Sharko has fallen too. And with the fire upgrade, your crossbowmen are going to get the chance to hurt more to the buildings. You know? Like they will be able to deal much more greater damage to the enemy structures. Okay. Um, money is looking good, even though we are kind of um, investing a lot of money since we lose all the heroes all the time, which is like a lazy playstyle of me in this game. Sorry for that. And we have nearly 3,000 collected once again. So now we have also the chance to buy the Forge Blades. You know, quality goes over quantity. The better upgrades you have, the more damage you will be able to deal. Heavy armor, 440. Warm Tongue has fallen once again. Dude, Warm Tongue, stop dying. We have not even the money to revive Sharku. And Saruman needs ages to be back on the menu, boys. Ugluk is level 7. Lourdes is level 7. And the Viking is level 9. And we are only 5 power points away, even less than that from the 25. Orkish medicine looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. That is Legolas, by the way, but we, we should... I, I'm not gonna click on anything. They should be automatically fighting. Oh my goodness. The Cloud Break to stun the units, but our units are level 5. When, they are, when your units are level 5, they will automatically get the fear resistance. They will be immune to fear or any crowd controlling effect from the enemy plan. Look this Legolas dude, he's fighting with swords. I pay the high price for the safety of my people. This be the hour when we draw the swords together. Maybe Legolas was actually thinking that Theoden was talking to him, but no 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 Legolas, he was talking to Aragorn. To your friend. I have made I my choice. Saruman has returned. That's great news. For the of my we have still people. a great amount of army here. Hopefully, we will be able to do some stuff with this army. Look at Legolas, man. He's so tanky. But not tanky enough. Oh, okay. Fellstorm. Several bolts or Wrath of the Caladras. Let's go for the Fellstorm, right? Yeah, let's go for the Fellstorm. And use it on the enemy units. I want to see this animation. Oh, looks sexy. It looks sexy, and you know it. Nice, nice, nice. I mean, doesn't deal as much damage as I was expecting it to deal. Not gonna lie. We can also use one more lightning from Saruman. Do it. Boom. Sun on your face. Fireball. They are so clumped. Hey, be careful, please. Wolfgar, you also go back, and Wormtongue has returned for the... I mean, Wormtongue has returned as Wormtongue the White. <laughs> because just like Gundam, you know what I'm saying? 
Alright, we need to recruit definitely more units at this point. Uh, let's go and revive the Uruk Manslayers. Fireball, but don't take too much damage, please, for no reason. And also, we are being chased down by the Rohirrim. Let's Wizard Blast them. Boom. Nice. And now we need to go back with Saruman. I have made my choice. Charge, men of I mean, stop hitting my wizard all the time, dude. Let's use Warchan on this crossbow man. Actually, we are doing a phenomenal job, but they have also a great amount of defense. I don't know if we can still do some stuff. We can also go for the for the um, debuff on the enemy units and make them weaker. Hopefully, they won't target the creeping. Oh, they will target the creeping, and this is gonna get one shot, dude. Holy moly. Dude, we are losing all the units we have. Let's recruit more and more units all the time. What is that? Summon several hordes of Uruk Riders. Or Raiders. Okay, there is Theodin. Uh, he's buffing his army to crush our army. Headhunter. We need eventually some more siege weapons, boys, to be able to break through the gate. Hey, escape, please, please go back. Wontong, don't die. Come on, Wontong, yes, you can do it. Oh, Saruman. No, Saruman, run, 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 run. Oh, my goodness. That actually hurts because Saruman is so expensive, dude. 4,400, you know? And that's the second time we are losing him. Sorry for that, guys. I was not thinking that. <laughs> Ugluk has fallen too. Dude, we are broke once again. We cannot even revive him. Like, you see the enemy units are glowing because of the glorious charge of theory. In this mod, I believe it's also affecting the infantry units, you know, to make them stronger, not only for the cavalry. Okay, one of them is crippled. I don't know. I was right-clicking on the ability from Lourdes. Level 10, the Viking. He has some strong units on the field too. Let's build. Oh my, Arcan Brain is level 10. Wolfgar, please don't die. Eight power points collected. But, oh my goodness, man. Guys, do you see that? He's summoning on top of the wall additional units all the time. And we are not able to do anything about that. It's so dirty. Wolfgar, go, 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 Wolfgar. Run, you fool. Fly, you fool. Is he gonna die? I hope not. Okay, it looks like he will get... But Lourdes has fallen. Oh my goodness, man. Our heroes are dying like flies. But now we have the money finally to recruit them or to revive them rather. Uh, we will definitely need stronger units on the field. And, you know, I want to make it as much like in the films as I possibly can. And it's for that reason, I'm actually pretty tempted to... Oh, Wolfgar has fallen too. Oof, man, that hurts. I want to build our army worthy of Mordor, and this is going to be only possible with the mighty and fighting Urukai, you know? And obviously, we have the chance to build Whiteman of Dunne and, and even some raiders and stuff, riders and stuff like that, but I don't want to do that. I mean, I might have to do that eventually to win this game, but for now, I was trying to win with Uruks only, you know? And because he has not many horses on the field, I'm also kind of... Uh, asking myself if we ever would need pikemen in this game. I mean, pikemen are still great for the front line, but Listen to maybe we don't need them, you know? Crossbows. Okay, so let's provide. get more of these units. What is this? Huskars. Oh, I believe they are like the elite infantry. Yeah, they are only also able to get limited to level three. And um, also, this building is I existing in the Shadow and Flame mode for BFME one. If you don't know, Shadow and Flame and Keep Age of the Ring are kind of like a, like a affiliates, you know, they work together. And for that reason, you will be able to see lots of similar the stuff from the Age of the Ring mods also in the uh, Shadow and Flame mod for Battle for Middle of One. Which is also a great mod with amazing graphics. I mean, that's a very scary army, you know, they have like a crazy population. Let's recruit some more units eventually. <laughs> I don't know, man. This is kind of this is kind of harder than I was expecting it to be. I was like, after we defeated the Deeping Wall, I was like, okay, you know what? It's gonna be easy now. I can run them down. But no, 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 no. They're actually being able to summon additional units on top of the wall all the time, which makes this extremely tanky for me. And I don't know what's gonna happen next. You know, I don't know how many units, how many times they are able to summon. As I'm not able to see many, many horses i was also not recruiting any pikemen until now maybe we will need some pikemen for the front line saruman has returned let's use speechcraft to level them up you know to give them some experience we have 10 power points collected let's try to see for 25 for the second 25 
for the avalanche also lords has returned so we have all the heroes beside wolfgar back on the on the menu let's recruit the man slayers once again let's make an army worthy of mortar and let's go and try to deal as much damage as we potentially can hopefully with this push we might get the chance to finish off this game and crash the defense in the last hope of the man the age of man is over boys the age of the uruks has come we're waiting right click on everything <laughs> i'm still right click on everything you know i hope that the heroes they know when and what to use leader of the hands cripple right click on it right click is for lazy people and i feel really lazy today which is a bad sign because that's the first video in 2022 and i should not feel that lazy but my new year's eve was kind of exhausting and also by the way guys a quick information we are about to start a tournament for battle for middle of 2 on the patch 1.09 version 2 which is gonna happen very very soon on the twitch channel twitch tv slash beyond standards if you haven't done it already please make sure to follow the channel it's for free and also if you enjoy this kind of content on this channel on youtube please make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe for more like this in the future okay so my plan is simple i want to build a huge army and go attack him with all what we got i mean on the other side i also like the fact that this is kind of a bit more challenging you know what i'm saying so it's not like you can make one army and run them down it's you know you need to be a bit more strateg strategic about that english is hard by the way um because imagine you make one single army and you can run them down easily that's what's happening in the battle for middle earth campaign all the time but that's going to be also changed in the upcoming version of the patch 2.22 the the missions in the campaign overall is going to be much much harder so you cannot win this easily anymore you need to be actually kind of smart about your choices we need more resources we have so much money we can do whatever we want okay let's go now and we have all the upgrades right let me check yep we have all the upgrades on the uruks too we have a strong front line strong back line with the heroes we are also able to buff their damage we have also war chant from the spell book let's kill all this stuff in no time the barracks from Rohan is going to be taken down in literally one shot. They have no chance. We have a really impressive army here. Level 9 Ugluk. There we go. Let's kill the farm right after that. Let's use war chants. Boom, boom. Freezing rain is on cooldown, but it's fine. 13 power points collected. We are collecting more and more power points. And also the AI, AI is rebuilding stuff, but they are losing all the time. So the ballista can take care of these structures. Why will why will we take care with the army on these archers? Sharku, do your stuff. Trample them down. What news, my friends? The power points are rising to the sky. Oh, he's summoning stuff. I don't know what's going on on top of the wall, really. Let's use Vizaplas. Let's use this on the on the archers eventually. I mean. You can see the game is like dropping down the F FPS from like 30 to like 3, you know? <laughs> because the more stuff is happening in the game and you need to understand that the game's engine is, uh, the game's engine is extremely old, you know? And for that reason, having this high graphical settings with this high HD textures for the units, for the buildings, for everything literally, is making the game kind of laggy. And remember, we are playing on single player. Imagine you are playing this game right now with these settings in multiplayer in like a 2v2 match with four really real players from all around the world. Imagine how laggy this can become, you know? I wish they would be able to make this in the Reforged a bit better with the new engine and the high graphical settings. You can still play it without any delay and lag in multiplayer. You know, that's, the, that's literally the only thing I'm looking forward to. Um, in the in the battle for middle of reforms i hope they will be able to fix the lag fix the delay you know and that all alone is going to be a huge improvement shark has fallen once again but on the bright side we have 24 power points collected so we will get there for the 25 very very soon our army is kind of body blocking themselves you know and i believe we need to make sure to recruit some more crossbow men Wolfgar has fallen too, the Viking. 
Okay. Saruman. Oh, okay, it was a mistake to actually go there. Oh my goodness, Saruman has been slain too. Dude, we have no money because Saruman is so expensive to be revived. Lord, stay close to the archers, please. And let's go now, Wrath. And let's use it on top of the side for the, for killing the enemy units slash buildings. Boom! Actually didn't damage the buildings at all, but killed a lot of Ugluk. Oh my goodness, don't look. <laughs> this is so tough, dude. It's so tough. Okay, so into the 25 power points, they have such a huge and long cooldown. Yeah, that's unbelievable. We need more units though. We, we are losing all the time. All the units we got. Warm tongue, please don't die. Can I use this on a on a target hero? You cannot right click on this one, by the way. That's not possible, unfortunately. But I could use it on this. Uh, it was kind of based on used on this guy because he has only one single ability. Oh, look, 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 look please don't die. Just stay away. You know, just stay away from the from the archers. Uh, scum from Lukebards. We will be able to summon some orcs, but we are not able to summon them inside the helm, Steve. That's not possible, also not here. So we need to summon them outside. <laughs> Look this... <laughs> Look this Krishna egg picture, dude. This guy was a legend in the films. He got eaten by Freebeard, though. He got kind of kind of smashed, you know? Freebeard didn't uh, feel it. This poor dude. Okay, we have now enough money to revive the heroes, that's nice. We can also recruit some more units, Manslayers are here. Let's use them to kill the structures inside the Helm's Deep. And we have still lots of units around this area. And actually, uh, the enemy doesn't have too many units on the field anymore. That's pretty nice. And all of that without breaking the wall, you know, without breaking the gate. Vision of Palantia, let's use it. The animations are also looking dope and i mean you can feel it right you can you can also see how much work has to be implemented into making this mod possible i mean obviously there is not only one person who is doing that there are it's like a team you know teamwork with like plenty of people but still you know it's like very impressive so they changed literally every aspect of the game it is design wise at least and also they added plenty of new factions it means unique content which was never existing in the Battle for Middle-earth games before. And as, you know, at least in terms of graphics, this is the best looking mod ever. You know? There is not a single mod in the Battle for Middle-earth scene which is near, near to this level of the design. I mean, kinda it is because of the Shadow and Flame mod, but once again, that's only possible because they copied a lot of stuff from the Age of the Ring mod, you know? Alright, so we are waiting for the heroes. The revive time is extremely long. Let's kill the last building inside the deeping wall. And then we can make a move. So we are also kind of crushing the enemy lines. We will eventually uh, need to make some more siege weapons. Lord is shooting from a, from a safe distance. I mean, they are also summoning outriders all the time, which are extremely tanky against arrows. Sharku has returned. That's good. And Ugluk is healing up. He's almost level 10. He's using his abilities, you know, whenever it's available, automatically. We can also use the Kribane to debuff. And he has still some units on top of the wall, but it's fine. We can also revive the uh, Man Eaters. Cloudbreak has been used once again from the opponent, but it's fine. Saruman has returned. That's great. Let's recruit some riders, maybe. You know what I'm saying? I want to, uh, you know, because he has no pikemen either. You know, that's why we can just trample down these archers in no time. He's summoning more and more archers on the field all the time. Gimli is jumping on the on the on the, on the Uruk's face. Wolfgar has returned. Um, can I cripple? No, I cannot cripple. Oh, he used cripple already. Okay, he crippled somebody else. Who's this? Doesn't matter. He's gonna die. Grima Wontang is getting away, that's good, Sar I cannot even get there, you know? I, I actually need to break the break the gate. Hmm. I could have played this obviously 1000 times better, guys, you know? I should have just built multiple siege works, multiple Uruk pits and keep spamming units all the time. But because of the mistake of mine and the fact that I'm losing the heroes all the time kind of forces me to invest. Like you see, Lord has been taken down once again. It kind of forces me to invest so much money into reviving these heroes, especially Saruman feels so expensive. Let's go for one more time on your face, son. Can I kill this? 
Arty range, please. Come on. Come on, die, Arty range. No. no okay, we need to make more army. We need to definitely make more army. Let's get three of these. And... Uh, spearmen are kind of useless. Let's go extrovers for some more range damage. Let's go for some Uruks and Ballistas. We have four of these. I want to be able to break uh, the gate. Now, maybe we can actually attack the gate very soon. And the archer range has been taken now. That's good. Build main army. Yeah, we can go for the build main army, right? Devastation. orders. I mean, Devastation... Eventually, we will unlock everything from the spellbook anyway. So, let's pick up the Devastation for now, and then we can choose whatever we want. So, we have also these uh, Riders now. Because they have, like, zero pikemen on the field, that means we can trample them down all the time. They have no chance. Our money is looking good once again. Let's give them Heavy Armor plus Banner. They are not able to get Forge Blades, however, these Extrovers, it's not possible, or not uh, the Fire Arrows, obviously they are not Archers, but still. Okay, we have 6,000, let's go for a Trample, there we go. Actually, we took so much damage from the Trample, are these, are, I don't know, man, like, I have not seen the Spears, are these Spearmen? I don't think so. So we are only missing um, Ugluk, right? And we have all the heroes back on the, on the menu, that's good. Giving, making sure that every unit from us has upgrades available. Warm Tongue is level 10. Uh, the, the riders were able to survive, that's good. Uh, we need more crossbowmen, definitely, to be able to, you know, keep the distance and shoot from a safe range. Let's get them also banner plus the Forge Blades. Okay, uh, Fire Arrow, I mean, sorry. Um, Lourdes has to be revived. It was Lourdes who was missing, not Ugluk. Sorry for that. Good, ready to fight. What is that? Let's use Freezing Rain, boys. It's a raining day. A and hallelujah. <laughs> Dude, I cannot sing. Sorry for that, guys. Sorry for your... I was crushing your eardrums. I know that. It's right click on everything, you know, because I don't like there is so much new stuff that when it comes to read every single one of these abilities slash units, this is implemented into the Isengard faction in the Age of the Ring mod. Dude, this video would be like taking five hours to be finished. Trust me on that one, you know, wild charge. Okay, then we will get um, slow resistant, right, from trampling down these arches. One beautiful trample. Nice. One more time. Beautiful. The level up animations are also looking dope. One more trample on the way back. Some stuff is happening. Animations are happening. I don't understand what's really going on. The gift pads are going down. Sarah one is almost level 10. Level 10 is going to give you the chance to steal the enemy units and make them fight for you. Back. The power points are rising. We can summon them once again, but <laughs> unfortunately, not even here we cannot summon them. We can only summon them outside, you know? It's kinda that's kinda tilting. Listen to my words. Ah, you cannot right click on this one, right? Okay. So we killed the structures once again, that's good. Marriott of Brandybog throwing rocks on us. I want to make sure that Saruman is not dying once again because even though we have great amount of money at this point, but still, we will still have to invest nearly 5,000 to revive Saruman and also a lot of time has to be invested. Wontong has fallen and Ugluk has fallen too, dude. Our heroes are dying like flies. The arches from the from the top side, from the roof of Helm's Steve are actually hurting quite a lot. Shaku has fallen too. We are literally losing every hero. We have only now <laughs> Wolfgar the Viking and Saruman the Wizard. That's all what we get. Um, okay, let's go for build me. No, 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 reset. Build me an army. Warfare of Mordor. Us. We cannot use it here. We need to use it outside. There we go. Let's use it right there. The other way. We can steal this them, way. but um, ah! there is nothing to steal Protect at this point. Ah! Wolfgar, don't die, please. Saruman, don't die either. Let's recruit or revive them all. Servants of my will. Oof, man, this game is actually kind of stressful, not gonna lie. Let's get them also upgrades, you know. <laughs> Dude. 
I don't know. No oh, please men. don't die, Galip heroes. I cannot afford to lose you anymore. Okay, we are killing the archers on the above the wall. That's good. We have our crossbow men and also the down landing archers. That's pretty nice. 13 power points collected. I mean, power points don't matter anything any at this point anymore because we have literally everything what is needed unlocked from the spell. But we don't need field of fires. We don't need industry because we have so much money. I mean, again, it doesn't hurt to have even more money, but it's not like gonna be nothing game changing. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so, and he's rebuilding stuff again. Dude! Leave me alone. Stop it. Get some help. You just get un everything unlocked, I guess. Even though Field of Fires is kind of absolutely useless for us because we have zero Lamry Mills up on the field. Alright, 1000 command points. And we are not able to fill it. I mean, we are able to fill it for a really short duration, but we keep losing stuff all the time. That's a curse. There will be no dawn I want to steal men. the enemy units, but can I get there? Everything is on cooldown from the spare book too, which can make a difference. Let's get some more extrovers, more crossbow men, and let's use the berserkers to actually kill stuff inside the deeping wall. I mean, he has units everywhere. He has so many units all the time. You know what I'm saying? That's the annoying part. Okay. Um. And somebody's gonna pay. Sharku, and we have now every hero beside Ugluk. Ugluk is still dead. Cloud Break has been used. The Ballista is getting shot. And unlike in Battle for Middle of One, the Siege weapons in BFME 2 slash in Rise of the Witch King are not damaging the units that much. Ugluk has returned that stop. Let's get them all the upgrades on the fighting Urukai to make them as tanky as, po as possible. We can also use the Shield Ball Formation you know, to make them even tankier. If we need to. Uh, Extrovers for some higher DPS from the safe distance. Don't die. Is that last time? Go Saruman, do it, do your thing. Oh my, he's... He actually recruits units all the time too. I mean, we gotta make up something now, you know? We gotta make some stuff happen. Because we were not able to reach the roof from the Helm Steve all game long. And that needs to be changed. We need to do stuff right now. And Legolas is also there. You see him? What is he doing? Oh, Hoax Strike. Oh my goodness. All right, Legolas. Chill, my friend. Relax. I want to steal them. Come on, fight for me and I will hold your oath with fear. Did I just miss it? Dude, did I just miss the level 10 ability from Saruman like that? Let's use industry too, just why not, you know? Get even more money. Berserkers are doing a good job destroying the structures at least, that's good. We need to work our way up slowly but surely, but... Uh, the problem is, the second we leave the deeping wall, he actually rebuilds everything again and again and again and again. Okay, shield wall plus the whole ground stands to make them to a tank. You know? Let's get some more riders! I mean... Dude, I cannot believe that. Throughout the entire game, and it's been now nearly one hour, I believe, right? We have not managed to kill one single time uh, the, the gate. <laughs> so we need to actually walk into the deeping wall first and then use the stairs to actually go inside the Helm's Deep. Okay, so the problem is we are command points capped, so we cannot recruit anything else at this point. Hopefully, this army is going to be enough to make something happen. We have the 25 almost back up. Hmm. It's not possible, right? No, we cannot use it in the land there. We have a huge army, though. Uruks, do you see how tanky they are? That's what I'm talking about, you see? In the shield wolf formation plus... <laughs> for a second, I thought these are the, the Rohirrim, you know? But these are our, our own riders. You can see the shield wolf formation all crown stands and the heavy armor on this Uruks are making them so extremely tanky that they can absorb lots of damage. Let's go for a trample right now, right for ruin in the world's ending. Okay. Ugluk. I, I like this name. I might actually call my son when I ever get one. Ugluk. No, I'm not gonna do that. That would be kind of embarrassing. Imagine your name is Ugluk. You know. The, the problem is the kids nowadays. They are so. 
um, they can so they can be extremely mean, you know. I'm actually getting a lot of information from my nephew. He's 10 and he's telling me all the time what is going on in the school. That's kind of that's kind of scary, you know what I'm saying? Like it was not like that when I was 10 years old. Let's use the avalanche. Hopefully it's gonna kill a lot of units. Boom! Yeah, I mean they got killed, but uh, 25. I, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, the 25s from this faction or from this mod, rather, I don't know about the other factions though, doesn't feel uh, nearly as much devastating as it feels right in, uh, like in, in the normal vanilla version of the Rise of the Witch King, you know? And remember, uh, in order to be able to play each of the Ring, you need to make sure to have the installed. You need to make sure that you have Rise of the Witch King installed and the patch 2.02.8.0.1 has to be enabled as well as disabling the, uh, the timer and enabling the minimal music that's required to be able to play this mod and also if you have other mods like the Edeen mod for example it needs to be disabled otherwise you won't get the chance to play this mod and your bfme 2 has to be on the patch 1.06 so lots of stuff has to actually happen i mean it sounds like crazy but it's actually quite easy you can be done with every single one of these things in like two minutes if you are fast in like 20 hours when you are sick. Wormtong has fallen once again. What a, what a surprise. Wormtong has been fallen all day, all night. Look, King Theorin, though. He's shining bright like a diamond and trying to show his quality as the King of Rohan. All right, he wasn't rebuilding anything. We need actually some siege weapons, but we are command points kept all the time. That's the problem of what we got. We cannot even go inside there because he's closing the gate and hoping for the best. It actually kind of feels extremely, extremely difficult. Just because they are kind of and never stopping to recruit more units, you know? And there is no difficulty right away. You cannot choose or adjust the difficulty in this map. In this map. That's not possible. That's not possible. Gimli is using Slayer on top of the wall. And Saruman, I don't know what you are doing, Saruman. Run for your life. Ugluk has returned. That's good. Ugluk, we need you here. Use Fireball and get away. Run for your life. Run for your life. Okay. So we have only two structures to be destroyed. You know, two structures we need to destroy to eventually win this game. Dude, you know what? We need uh, the rams now. We need them right now. I cannot even attack it. I can. You see, it's hard to click on the gate too. Google, what are you doing? Like the units pathing sometimes doesn't make any sense. I right clicked Ugluk into the army, you know, into our own army, and he was trying to reach this area <laughs> from the maybe the, the gate was open, that's why, I don't know. But the unit pathing, you need to kind of think for the units all the time, you know? So please don't die. Oh my he's shooting us all the time, this hero or whatever this is. Saruman run for your life. You need to ram to break the gate ASAP. Arkin Brain or whatever your name is. Legolas is also fighting with swords. Gimli. This is Gimli? No, it's not Gimli. But whoever this was actually has been slain. That's good. Fireball from Saruman. Everything is on, on auto cast. So he's going to cast it automatically. The gate is going to be finally broken from the ram. Finally, dude. It took us only like one hour to actually be able to reach to the gate. Keep quiet. We will set up camp there. Keep quiet. And Wolfgar has fallen once again. What a surprise. Lords, please don't die. I need you. Okay, never mind. Die. So we have lost four heroes. I mean, I don't know how many times we have lost our heroes. But I know that uh, Wormtongue is the one who was slain the most. Can you please attack the wall uh, or the gate right up, please? Finally. All right, we broke this one. Let's also break this gate. Mary is coming. Mary is going to war. Let's use the fast storm. Once again, Lady Arvin, not Arvin, actually, Elvin. I call her Arvin all the time for whatever reason. Okay, that's the keep. You know, that's the stuff we need to we need to destroy to be able to win this game. And for that reason, let's go ham, my friends. Let's go ham. Orkish medicine looks like meat's back on the menu, boys, for healing for the for the nearby units. Right click everything. That's good. Let's use Warchan on them. And let's... Well, be careful. Ugluk! 
Why is he not able to attack the gate? I don't get it. You see, Ugluk is getting life steal. Whenever he attacks, he's actually stealing, like, life stealing. You know what I'm saying? So, Lady Ilvin, the shields maiden of Rohan, is trying her, you know, the last girl standing. Literally. We have, we have extra words on top of the leaving wall. And now is the scene in which Isengard is actually raising the banner of the White Hand, you know? Imagine now if Gandalf would come with Elma and like 5,000 horses. Sharko has returned, that's good. You have no chance against the Manslayers. We are debuffing the hero doesn't work, but we are using it anyway, just why not? Actually, Elvin is pretty strong, man. But not strong enough. The men slayers are also women slayers. <laughs> oh my goodness. Alright. Oh, Gimli is here taking revenge. I don't know what this ram is all about. You know, what, what, what are you doing, ram? I don't get it. Like, he's ramming something, hitting like a truck, but I don't know what is getting hitting like a truck. We can sneak in this ram maybe into the deep and hopefully be victorious. Gimli is using Slayer. Hopefully the Gimli is not going to be able to kill the ram. <laughs> All right, so we gotta we gotta take care of this the son of the of the king Theodine. Kill the kill the son. Okay. Uh, the ram I don't know the ram is losing his way you know but the Gimli actually doesn't attack the ram right I don't know we will see about that. The heroes, they are really painful, you know? When it comes to deal with them, they are extremely hard. Like Gimli, Aragorn, we have to kill Gimli, Legolas like 20 times and they will keep getting revived all the time from the AI. So you can see the AI is a bit more, uh, a bit smarter and also, you know, much, much stronger than the AI from the Battle for Middle of One, for now. But we are about to change that also for the upcoming patch, upcoming version of the patch 2.22. And we are victorious, ladies and gentlemen, just like that. It was the easiest. No, no, it was not the easiest thing, but it's it's doable. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out.